Hey everyone, it's Stephanie Fit from fitbodies.com 2Ts. And I'm here with Nancy Gibbs. We're going to talk about stock trading. I'm so excited for that. Really quickly though, um, we're sponsored today by Leaps and Rebounds. I'm sitting on my rebounder, my little mini tramp. And those of you who've been with me for a while know how much I love my mini trampoline. I use it here in Colorado. The weather could be 90 degrees one day and freezing the next, maybe not that extreme, but it feels like that sometimes. And um, we have some freezing weather coming up. My daily walks are tough to do when it's really slippery, icy out. And so I love to bounce on my rebounder. It's a leash and rebound. Let's see if we can see it in this light. It's kind of hard. Can you kind of see I'm sitting on a, let's see, I'm standing up. There it is. It's a mini trampoline. You can kind of see it. Anyway, um, you can get 10% off if you're interested in investing in one for yourself. Gives you all the benefits of running and walking without the pounding to your joints. It gives you great lymphatic flush, great heart rate challenges, and you don't slip on the ice. So you could go to leapsandrebounds.com and you type in Fit Bodies 2Ts, Fit Bodies 10 for 10% 10 off. Okay, enough of that. Let's talk to Nancy. This is Nancy Gibbs. She's a dear friend, a neighbor, a nurse, but um, most recently a trader of stocks. And this is something that, you know, I took some college classes and I have a financial advisor and some mutual funds or whatever. But the idea of personally trading stocks is fascinating to me. And I thought it might be to you too. So I'm bringing Nancy on so she can share some of what she's doing and maybe some tips and some ideas, maybe get some of your juices flowing. Um, and uh, then we'll have a, a little Q&A at the end. So Nancy, how's it going? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to see you. Um, so how? tell us the story of how you got into this stock trading. Well, I was always interested in the stock market. I had one stock that I would trade. Um, you know, I'd buy a little bit and then I'd wait a couple of weeks. It'd go up, I'd sell it and wait for it to go down and buy it again. I kind of did that, just making a little money on the side. Just uh, I did that for probably 10 years. Um, and then about three years ago or so, I uh, just kind of jumped in it and learned a lot about trading. I'm still learning a lot, um, took a lot of classes um, and I kind of love it now, to be honest with you. It's, it's really fun. It's very, it can be maddening. It can be frustrating, but it's super fun. Very cool. So this is what, this is your full-time gig now. This is what My, you do. Yes, I do so this full-time. Do you call yourself a stock trader? I am, but I, I'm not a professional stock trader. I don't have a degree in it. I, I just do it. I'm a, a novice, I guess you would say. Um, but it doesn't matter. The stock market doesn't care what degree you have. They just care what, <laughs> what trades you make if you're on the right side or the wrong side. So well, that's the good thing. <laughs> you, that brings to mind um, <clears throat> a college investments class or a finance class. I don't remember which class it was. It was, it was really fun, really interesting. And we, we competed um, against at the time, it, I recall, well, we had a competition for investing, trading stocks and whatever, but, um, I recall there was a story about, a a, a monkey randomly picking stocks and, and randomly picking, buying and selling and the monkey won because <laughs> you know, we're all doing our research. And, um, there are a lot of ways that you can be prepared for this but there's also I guess the game or the the unknown is part of the experience is that true yeah it's it's something different every day and there's a lot of adrenaline there is adrenaline involved when you make when you make money it's it can be addicting honestly uh you can have a lot of heartache that when you lose money um but there's tricks to kind of help your help yourself not uh, lose a lot hopefully if you know what you're doing, you can make, put stops in your money so you can still trade maybe a little bit when you're starting to learn and uh, you don't lose it all. You have a stop in there and I can talk more about that if you want. Uh, yeah. So that, you know, you can, you can kind of dabble with it a little bit. 
see if you so, like yeah. it. Yeah. Do you suggest if someone's watching this and thinking, hmm, I think I want to try this out. How do you suggest someone get started? I, I, I understand that they shouldn't just dive in without any preparation. How should someone go about getting started with trading stocks? Well, the first thing I would do, everybody has hopefully some kind of retirement or you know portfolio that they're building. Um, before I would even touch any money, I would go to your financial advisor and ask them questions about your money. Everyone's money has been taking a hit in this uh, stock market right now. And I, just because someone says they are a money manager, um, doesn't mean they know how to handle your money. So I, when I, I would, I think everybody should do this. Everyone should make a phone call to their money person and say, what are you doing to hedge our money? What are you doing to protect our money if this market continues to fall? And when I say hedge, that term comes from, you know, what, he, you know, what hedges are around our home that we use to protect our home back in. I think the, the term comes from England where they would put hedges around castles and things to protect the castle. That's what a hedge is. Um, there are things you can do to your money and that your financial advisor should be doing to protect your money so you don't go to zero. Mm -hmm. um, for example, they can buy things called puts. So when the, when the market goes down, you actually make money. You're actually making money when the market goes down. Oh. Um, when the volatility goes up in the stock market, you can make money. You, generally, the volatility goes up when the stocks go down. It doesn't always work that way. But there are a lot of different things um, that your financial advisor could do. But I definitely ask them, how are you hedging our money, number one? And, um, and I would also say, um, do you have stops in our money, in our account? For example, if we have another crash, heaven forbid we do, um, even though we are lower than, some stocks are lower than they were in the uh, pandemic right now. Um, then what do you have some, a trigger in our account that says sell if the stock market just falls and crashes one day? Um, and if they say, well, yeah, but then, you know, the, you won't be able to make it on the way up if we sell it. That's not, that's not a good answer. They should be able to give you a direct answer of what they're doing with your money, um, so that you don't continue to lose a ton of money. Everybody's account is generally down. But there should be, they should be able to give you specific things they're doing to protect your money. And we, everyone should know what those things are. Oh, that's great advice. I'm madly taking notes. I'm going to probably rewatch this so that I can take better notes. This is good, interesting information. Okay, so someone it ha talks to their financial advisor. They get um, some answers. They decide they want to move forward with uh, doing some trading of stocks on their own. What are next steps? Okay. And the next step is if you've never traded stocks, just don't go and take your whole portfolio over. Don't do that. Um, but uh, you can open up an account with a, a platform like, uh, for instance, I prefer TD Ameritrade. They have a, a platform on there called a Thinkorswim, and it gives you great advice, uh, free help to set up uh, the things you might need on your computer to be able to trade. Um, so I use TD Ameritrade. I like, I love TD Ameritrade. And just so you know, if you have an account that is under $25,000, if you open one up, then um, you have to wait in between trades. There's a time period. For example, if you sell a, if you buy a stock, you can't turn around and sell it again if you have less than $25,000. And this is just a, a rule for ev any, anybody, everywhere. Um, uh, you can't turn around and sell it. You have to wait three days until that money settles and then you can sell it again. Or you get into trouble and then they freeze your account just so people know that. So if you have over $25,000 that you can play with, then um, you can buy and sell all day long. So just so everyone knows that is the magic number $25,000. But I would say the average person doesn't have $25,000 that they can just, you know, play with. Um, so if you even have, you know, 5,000 or something, you can just, you can open up an account with them. And um, I would recommend then maybe taking a few classes online. Um, you can look on even YouTube, look at the great information we're getting on YouTube here um, from you, by the way, Stephanie. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but I would start there. Um, you open up a small account and then get some education before you do anything else. That's the first thing I would do. I well, the first thing, talk to your financial advisor. The second thing is you open up a little account. 
Yes, I love that. And then, and then start small, like you say, start small and kind of play, dip your toe in and then get some experience under your belt. I imagine that, you know, you having experienced this 10 plus years, 13 years, uh, like 10 with the one stock, and then you kind of dove in, right, about three years ago. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm imagining that there's been some great days. There's been some great days, very great days. There have been some really, really bad days, but that is the nature, really bad days. And um, that's the nature of the beast with this, um, with this job, I guess you could call it. A lot of the traders that I follow, the professional traders, they all have a, all have stories of losses. Everybody's going to take a loss, but you should not trade until you know how to protect your money that you have in your account. Um, and I mentioned the word stop. If you don't know how to put a stop in your money, in other words, if it hits a certain amount, you're out, you're out of that trade. So you don't lose it any further. Do not trade until you know how to 100% protect your money. So that, that's really nice. yeah, um, I was going to mention, I do follow these guys and Mark It's called market rebellion. They're awesome. Uh, just a great group of traders. They are, he, um, they have a lot of classes, um, a lot of different ways. Website? They have a website, marketrebellion.com. Um, John and Pete Nigerian, they started this. Um, they're on CNBC a lot, or they were anyway. Um, really, so we could just go to that website and learn more about them. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, but there's a lot of really great beginning classes. Um, but back to your question. Yes, this is this is a this can be a very um, stressful thing. It can be an amazing thing. It's so much fun, but it is definitely up and down all the time. You know. So it's just funny. I was trying to be glass half full, like when I said you have some great days, because really what I'm thinking is, oh my gosh, I bet you had some really bad days. I was trying to be positive, but yeah. So it's both, and that's the draw. That's I the know. draw. Yeah. That is the draw and learn from other people's mistakes. Like I did not know, I did not know how to put a strong enough stop in the money when I first was trading. And so I lost much more than I ever should have lost when I start, first started. Um, but I'm, you know, you, that's how you learn sometimes, but learn from me and other people, just make sure you know how to put a stop in before you trade anything. <laughs> so. I'm going to put exclamation points by stops right here. Stop. Good, good stuff. Very cool. Um, so on the good days, I imagine that you hop up and dance around the kitchen and high five your family and celebrate. Um, how, how do you handle bad days? Well, those are tough. Those are very hard. Those are tough. Um, what I do is I, I've started putting quotes around. I actually have a board in the basement where I put little quotes on my, my, my cork board. That I find, but I have one in my kitchen. In fact, I'm going to hold it up. I, I put this, I have this hanging in my kitchen. I like to trade in my kitchen because I there's a lot more light in here than there is in the office. But I don't know if you can see it. Does it look backwards there? It says every day oh, is a yeah. fresh start. Um, it just reminds me, I yeah, I might have lost money today, but tomorrow I can get up and I can do it differently, you know. So um that's awesome. Yeah. The, the, so, you know, I talk a lot about um, just health and wellness and financial health is a big, big, big chunk of that. I mean, let's face it, we can be fit and eat well and, you know, have great relationships. And if finances are tanking, it's really hard to have balance in everything else, you know? And so to have a, a strategy to handle you know, it, what, what you're doing, it, it's right there where for me, maybe it's easy to put off because I just see a statement mailed out once a month and I look at it and go, oh dear, <laughs> you know, my, my retirement, ah, oh, not looking so good right now. Um, but, you know, having it in your face daily, the, the quote thing is a great strategy. I think is you, do you have, people in your life who can talk you off the cliff <laughs> I actually have a trading partner right now um so I, I go to a uh, every well I've gone to two of these little uh, conventions now and um by the way I should mention this I, I should before I go any further so there's a difference between investing and trading I just want to make sure I say this 
clearly. Investing, you just basically are putting money in a stock and you're going, you're in it for the long term. Um, and you're generally, you could say, look, if it drops 10%, I'm out or 20%, I'm out, or you can hedge it with other things, but your, your, your intent is to hold that stock long term. And that's generally what money managers have traditionally done. A trader, you're much more active. There's different types of traders too. You can be a day trader when you're in, where you're in and out of a trade. Um, you make it, you, you have a certain amount of money in the morning and you don't hold any stocks overnight. You're out. That's a day trading. That used to, used to get a bad rap on those, but that's actually, I'm, that's, I'm finding that to be a lot more um, safer in this environment we're in, to be honest with you. For me personally, everybody's different. There's also swing trading and that's what I used to do all the time. And swing trading is when you will put a, a position on and maybe keep it for two or three weeks and then you're out. Um, so there's different types of, just so you know, there's investing and there's trading and you have to decide if you want to take on uh, a little bit, you want to take a little money and try this. You have to decide, am I going to be an investor or I'm going to be a trader? Cause they are different. So I wanted to say that clearly first. So That's really important to know. I'm glad you, you clarified that because I think some of us think we're uh, trading when really we're investing and that's okay. That's totally okay. But trading, what you're speaking of and what you're spending your time doing is a different beast altogether. Yes. And you just, everybody has a, a different way of doing it. You can just let someone else handle it. You know, it's really, it takes a lot of time. And, and if you don't have time to research it and do a decent job, it sometimes that is the best thing to do as long as you feel confident that your financial advisor has a hedge on and is protecting your money and not just sitting there going, oh, it'll come back, it'll come back. That's not a that's not a active management. I'm just going to say that I have a beef about that. So yeah, um, no, we need to hear. We need to hear. Um, but but back to your question about who who do I talk to? I, I so I have a trading partner now that I met at a uh, um, a conference, and um, so it's just it, and then we have kind of a, a it's just a group, big group that gets together for this conference and. It's just great camaraderie. You know, we all learn from each other and um, everybody's good at something different. Somebody else is doing something you weren't doing. You're like, that's a good idea. Why don't I do that? I like that idea. So, but even if you don't have a trading partner, being able to have somebody to actually discuss like even just the stress of money in general mm -hmm. is I think so important, so important because I, I think we underestimate how stressful money can be. I mean, I know of my life, that's probably been one of my most stressful things I've dealt with is mm -hmm. um, worrying about money. Um, when I was younger, you know, especially when I was younger, before I was married and um, just worrying about basic things. Mm -hmm. So um, I just think being able to communicate with that somebody in a safe place is really important. I love that. I love that. That's the, that's the wellness aspect to this because, um, you know, the, every day isn't great. Every day isn't bad either. But you know, when you have those tough times to have someone who understands, I, family members don't always understand, I guess, no matter what industry, what, what we do as a career, family members don't always understand everything that we do. And so it's nice to have somebody uh, that we can vent to or lean on. Love that. So true. Um, has a question popped in and it just popped out of my mind, but um, I'll, I'm sure it'll, it will come back. I wanted to um, ask you um, about your, so I know a little bit about, cause I read your book and we'll plug your book at the end. Um, but I read your book and so I, I know a little bit about you um, and your past and your growing up and everything. And so um, how it's, I find it fascinating that you're, trading you're dealing with money all day every day uh, did you have a scarcity mindset to overcome to get to this place well I I think um I just I came from we didn't have any money okay when I grew up we had a uh when my grandmother died my mom and I lived in an apartment that was just a really crappy apartment and she was on disability we had food stamps we had the whole thing um, and I just felt very motivated to get out of that situation, you know, and I, I mean, I was happy, but I didn't want to be there. I wanted more. I wanted to own a home. My parents never owned a home and I'm the most wonderful people in the world, but they never owned a home. I wanted to own a home. I wanted to 
you know, have, I didn't need to be rich or anything, but I want to have some kind of stability. So yeah, I was always very motivated to, um, to just get out of that, get out of that mess and make something of my life. <laughs> so. Yeah. So it sounds to me that you had an abundant mindset. It sounds to me that you thought uh, of abundance, that you, that you wanted more and that you worked for more. And some, some of us struggle um, with that there's never enough. And I, and I think that would be tough in, in dealing with money all day. I think, I think one would need to do the work to overcome that so that they realize money is just money. It's, we, we, we attach emotion to money. We attach meaning to money. We attach status to money. We attach all these things. But I would imagine that you have to kind of distance yourself from that and just look at it like money's money and this is my job and this is what I'm doing. And do you see any of that? Yes, yes. In fact, um, I, it's always very troubling to me when I hear of a CFO, which just recently happened, um, take his life, jump from a, I don't know, some beautiful he was very, very wealthy guy jumped from his apartment. His wife didn't even know he just jumped. Um, and you just hear these stories constantly. I have CNBC on all day long. So I hear so many stories, but um, when you hear those stories, you think, wow, he had all the money in the world. Why would he take his life? And, you know, if something wasn't going well at work or, you know, something, there was some loss, but he still had millions of dollars is I mean, clearly money isn't, does not equal happiness. It doesn't. And, um, you know, we get money to have maybe a little more freedom or to provide for the necess necessities of life, but it doesn't mean the more money we have, the happier we are at all. So I have to keep reminding myself that, um, especially when I've had those big losses, um, it, I've taken a hit, you know, a little bit myself mentally, like, oh my gosh, how did I do that? Why did I, how did I, what was I thinking? You know, so, but then you see somebody like that and you think, well, my life is worth more, much more than my bank account. It always will be. So I love that. I love that, Nancy. I love that. Well, so when things are going good, you're having a good day or whatever, how do you get paid? Share with us how that works. So um, what I was, well, I've kind of changed how I've done this, but what I've been doing with the day trading now is I have a certain amount in my account. And when I get over that amount, I just, um, you just transfer it from your bank to your bank account, like from the TD Ameritrade, you can just hit a couple buttons and it'll send it right over to your bank. Nice. And so that, that's what I do. And it, you have to pay taxes on that at the end of the year. But I mean, just like any other job, you've got to pay taxes. So, um, so that's how it's very easy, you know, as long as you, um, now I will say if you're trading within, in, within an IRA account, you don't do that. You just keep the money in there and you keep it building because you don't want to have, unless you have to take it, but then you're going to take a huge hit on your taxes because, mm -hmm. you know, unless you're within the age group that you can actually take that money out now. Um, so just something to be mindful of what kind of account you're trading from will depend on, um, how you, how you get your money and if you take your money out. That's important. That's important. Definitely, definitely need to be aware of that. And and of course, you're going to educate yourself before you even get that far. So you're going to have some ideas. Absolutely. Yes. And start very small. If you want to just dabble in it, start very small. And again, don't put any trades on unless you have a stop in it and you know exactly what a stop is. I can't say that enough. Learn from my Keep mistakes. Saying it. <laughs> Thank you for that. Cause I mean, that's going to stand up first and foremost in my mind, maybe even get like a stop sign for the wall. Stop. <laughs> yes. I used to have a bell. I had a bell that I tried for a while. You know, those bells, like you go to a, a hotel desk and you ring the bell uh -huh. because you know, do you remember Seinfeld where they have the George Costanza thing where he would, he always said, I'm going to leave on a high note. Uh -huh. <laughs> so one of my problems is sometimes I'll make money. I'm like, Oh, I got to keep going. I got to keep going. And then I, sometimes I'll, I'll drop, it'll drop a little bit what I, what I'll lose a little bit what I made. So now I, what I do is I, I try to do the George Costanza, I call it, I've made the money I want to make, hit the bell and I'm out. So anyway. Love it. Very symbolic and the great sense of humor with that as well. You got to have a sense of humor, right? You, you have to, yeah. I mean, I imagine as a nurse, you had to have a sense of humor as a stock trader and as parents, we have to, I mean, sense of humor goes a long way. <laughs> Very true. Yes, this is very true, especially dealing with these heavy things. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes, yes. Um, okay, so I'm looking at my notes and I think for the purposes of our discussion, we are just glossing over this really. People could dive way deep into this, very, 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 very deep. Um, but I'm not a, a financial expert and my my platform is just about finding balance in all the areas of our lives. And finances are definitely a place where we, um, a lot of us think that we could improve on or at least find some more wellness in that area. And so I'm really grateful for the introduction to the idea that we can take this on ourselves and, that, and some ideas of where to go to find it. Is there anything else that you'd like to share re regarding trading and what you're doing um, that you think would be beneficial for the audience? Um, not really. I mean, if, if it's not something you enjoy, don't do it. Honestly, don't do it. Just, just know what's going on with your money. Just really ask questions. You can always have your money transferred to someone else. If you don't like the way they're handling it, if they don't have a good answers, a good, clear answers for you, transfer it. You, you can go to somebody who's a fiduciary. You can go to somebody who's has interest, who actually makes money when you make money and not just somebody who just is lazy and says, oh, it'll go up one day. Um, just, I think that would be my, my last thing with the money thing. So, but I do have questions for you. Oh, okay. Sock it to me. Yes. I have questions for you. So I'm used to walking around all day, you know, as a nurse or in my house, wherever. So when I'm trading now, I find myself sitting a lot. And I know a lot of people are having these similar jobs where they're working at home or they're working and they're sitting. And I am not used to this at all. Even though I've been doing this for three years, I I'm noticing my core is getting much less, um, uh, is getting weaker. And I, I go to the gym every morning. Um, I've got myself a wooden chair. Finally, I'm going to buy, I think I'm going to buy one of those things you're sitting on, by the way. I, I know. I'm, I'm well, liking yeah. that. that. That's what I need to buy right there. Or a um, fit ball, a fit ball. Or a fit ball. Okay. Yeah. So I just wanted to get your, your, and I have, you know, my back hurts sometimes. And oh, what are your suggestions for the people like me that just sit here? Yes. Okay. So, um, I did a video way a while back. Um, y'all can search. I think it's, I titled it sitting is the new smoking, which is not my title. I mean, I titled it the video that that's not my term. I didn't coin that term. I borrowed that term from whoever started it, but, um, Sitting is really not that great our, for our, our bodies are designed to move. And so, yeah, it makes sense that you're starting to feel some things kind of shift and, and kind of get out of, a, of alignment. But the good news is, is there are lots of tricks and tips. So you found a wooden chair that fits you. You said you've gone through several chairs and finally found one that you, at least sitting in is fairly comfortable. Um, try uh, movement. What I like to do is I wear a fitness tracker. I, I use a Fitbit. Some people use an Apple watch or whatever. And I have it programmed so that every hour I, I want to hit 250 steps minimum. And so if I haven't stepped 250 steps, it'll buzz me 10 minutes before the hour. And so I can get up and sometimes I can't go for a walk around the block. Sometimes I can get some fresh air and walk around the block. Sometimes for me, it's just marching in place. So you could set either have a watch that did that for you, Nancy, or you could set a timer, um, you know, kitchen timer or whatever kind of timer, set a timer on your, on your phone for 45 to 50 minutes anyway, is about the sweet spot for focus. The um, neuroscientists tell us that that's really the optimal time that past that we kind of lose focus. So that might be a good time. Anyway, set it for 45 minutes. And even if you, I know that you probably need to stay close, right? To your screen and your, you, you kind of need to be around everything. So you could just march in your kitchen, dance, or walk something. around the table. Yeah. Dance for, for, you know, a minute or two, or you could go for steps like I do and, you know, and then sit down again and another 45 minutes or 50 minutes goes by and then get up again and move. Right. Um, so that's a trick that's worked for me. Um, and then what you sit on that wooden chair you, we talked about, but, um, I'm bouncing on the rebounder. You could sit on a rebounder or you could get one of those fit balls to sit on the nice thing about the fitness balls 
is that um, your feet are on the ground and you have to balance. And so that it activates your core and your back is part of your core. And so, you know, obviously your core is the front, back and sides of your torso and your pelvic floor muscles. And so sitting on that activates a lot of those different muscles, especially if you shift around, you know, like you're on your computer and you kind of shift and anybody who sits on those balls still, I don't know how they do it. I always want to move on them. Right. So, uh, wait. Can, uh, and um, that kind of mixes it up too. Those are a couple ideas. That's a great idea. Yeah, I yeah. I don't break it up like that, and I need to do that. Thank you, because I yeah. in my group, I'm in the mode, you know, and then I just oh I yeah, oh that. yeah. Well, if you if you look at um, and I am not an expert at this at all because when I get into something, sometimes hours can go by, right? The ad time can just fly when we're super focused, deep deep focus. But um, some of the experts on focus out there say that breaking it up, we actually can get more done. It's, it's, you know, it's hard to stop. It's hard to take a break, but they say long-term that's optimal. And, and you know what? It's different for everyone. So try the ball, try walking around, try dancing around, see if, see what works. That's a good idea. I'm going to do that. Yeah. I, I need to break it up more. Yeah. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Anything else? Um, I did have one more thing too. I wanted to see what your recommendations are for dealing with the anxiety of money. Like just what do you, what kind of, uh, you just have such an awesome holistic view of everything. So I'm, I'm curious. That's one of those things. Sometimes you just mention money. I remember I sat in a class and I started talking about money and budgeting and my, I felt like my anxiety level just started to rise and I had, I didn't even hear anything stressful. It was just the whole thing of money just made me start stressing out. <laughs> yeah, there's always, there's always something about money. Um, so for me, um, I've done a lot, a lot of work to overcome feelings of scarcity and um, really trying to dwell in, in a place of abundance, being grateful, um, focusing on, um, big picture and so forth. And so I do some woo woo stuff. I love, I love breath work. I love just pausing and taking a deep breath. When I feel the anxiety start to rise, you know, I open up that statement, my retirement portfolio and going, ah, it's taking a dive. Okay. Put it down deep breath, you know, <laughs> breathe. Um, but one thing that is really kind of helping me um, is when I take my daily walks, I have my um, affirmations that I say, and I say them over and over again. It's so funny because I, I'm a PE teacher during the day, and I was walking with my kids today on the track, and I found myself it just become a habit now out of the blue. I just say it to myself anytime I'm walking now. So I, I was doing it walking the track with the kids, and I was, but one of I have several different affirmations that I say, but one of them. Uh, the, around money is I say, I say this, I love money and money loves me. I let it go. I let it grow. I let it flow. And I just say it over and over and over again. I love money and money loves me. I let it go. I let it grow. I let it flow. And it just makes me feel good. <laughs> I like that. that. I like that. Very positive thing, you know, very positive and up. A beat. That's good. That's right. Really good. That's, you know, and then, and then when something financial takes me to my knees, we've experienced layoffs, we've experienced job loss in our household. I'm looking at transitioning from teaching full time to going out on my own, which is very scary. Whenever something really is hard, hard, um, I, tremendous self care is what I found works. You know, take a bath go to bed early, read a deliciously meaningless book, um, you know, watch Netflix with a loved one. Um, try not to eat your emotions. I won't, wouldn't suggest that necessarily to people, but take a walk holding the hand of someone you care about or gaze at the full moon, just stuff that brings joy and gratitude because the reality is, is that finances can knock you to your knees sometimes. And um, 
So no amount of positive words can change that. I know, I know that, that sometimes life comes at us. Um, but just taking a moment to appreciate the, what's, what's around that's positive and, and, and taking time to care for the self, I think is important. I love that. It makes me think of those bath bombs I have that I never use that I'm waiting for the special <laughs> day to use them. And they're sitting there looking at me. I'm like, but those are so big and they're kind of expensive. What next time I'm going to use one when I have a really bad day in the market. Okay. Why, why am I looking at these bath bombs all day long? Why? Why don't I just use them? Light a couple candles, throw a bath bomb in, soak and just breathe and think of all the things you're grateful for. And it, you know, it, it, it I talk about with um, with several of my videos in my blog, and I, I talk a lot about activating the parasympathetic nervous system. So, so we've got the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. And you know this as a nurse, the sympathetic nervous system is the fight or flight, but it's also the part of our nervous system that gets things done. And so I would imagine trading stocks, there's a lot of that sympathetic nervous system kicking in. There's a lot of that, right? And so the idea, and, and I guess a lot of jobs out there besides that, I mean, nursing, teaching, there's a lot of that sympathetic nervous system. And, and so to kick in the parasympathetic, and I like to look at it like that's the rest and digest. That's the part of our nervous system that helps settle us, soothe us, calm us. And we need both. One isn't good and one isn't bad. They're, they're both great and they both can, too much of a good thing can be bad. But finding that balance in the parasympathetic nervous system, I think of as like putting on your parachute. And so the parachute doesn't make the fall go away. You're still falling. <laughs> Life's still coming at you, but the landing is so much softer, right? So things can still happen. That sympathetic nervous system kicks in as we want it to, to help us survive. But finding ways to activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which is any soothing activity, breath work, meditation, baths, walking, um, reading, you know, like I, all the things I mentioned before, anything, any self-care, something that makes you feel good is going to activate that parachute, that parasympathetic nervous system and help whatever crisis is happening in the background, help the landing be a little softer. That's great. That's this. I need this. Thank you. This is helpful. Yeah. Well, I need this. I'm so glad we could talk, Nancy. So I want to end with just a plug for your book because I know that that you're very a very modest person, but I have to say um, this memoir that you read and please share the title of it with us. Show us the the. It's, let's picture my mom. It's called The Violent Thief. Yeah, and this is a memoir, right? Yeah, it's, it's a memoir. Uh, yes, yes, this is. It's a story of like her life, our life, and the things we went through together. It's a very compelling story, beautifully written. Um, you're vulnerable, you're direct, you're truthful and honest and really generous in sharing. And um, it, I, the reason I don't have my copy to hold up is I loaned it out to someone because it's so good and I don't remember who I loaned it to so I'll just buy another one because I want one of my own but I do highly recommend people read it and it has nothing to do with trading stocks it has okay. everything to do with living your best life um and then so anything more you want to add about it and where can they find it um Amazon and um that's it's just called the violent thief and it's referencing the illness that she suffered um, in her life. And um, it's a quick read because I don't know about you, but I don't have a ton of time to sit and read a lot of books. But um, anyway, it's, it's, it's truly, I mean, it's a true story. So it's, it's all out there and it is what it is. So <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate you sharing that. And so how can people if they have questions or um, do you do you mentor people or are you just totally just sharing and doing this on your own? Do you people follow you on social media or anything like that? I just have my personal social media. Um, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not technically trained, so I don't really tutor anybody, but I, I always have ideas. I always love chatting about it. Um, 
So, I mean, I, I guess if anybody really wanted to, they could message me on a, I'm on social media. So okay. um, but my book's on Amazon and um, yeah, that would be wonderful for people to check out. And, and that does support you, you know, the, the, the little bit of any cut that you would get from the sale of that book, right? You just want to get it out there, the message, but any little bit is, um, is, is welcomed. Any support would be wonderful. So you guys go get that book. Awesome. Well, Yay. well so anything else? Are we forgetting yeah. Uh, no, but I feel like I'm tomorrow. I'm going to make sure I am walking around every 40 minutes at least and doing something, <laughs> jumping up and down, running around instead of just sitting here glued to my computer screen. So, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm going to start doing that tomorrow. I'm going to put as much of this, I'm going to put TD Ameritrade and market rebellion and, and these things in the show notes, um, so that people can look, I'm going to put leaps and rebounds.com and the code for the 10% off. Um, but people can like and comment to this video. So Nancy, I'll let you know if people have, have questions for you, they can just write it down in the comments for this video and then I'll forward them to you and then consult with you before I answer back. How about that? That's great. That's awesome. And um, I'm really grateful for your time. I really am. Thank you for sharing your story and and for sharing um, I mean, the fact that you're honest, that this is a day-to-day -day thing and there's good and bad. I like that. I like that. Some people seem so overconfident with money. And I think the reality is we all are just, um, you know, having good and bad days. I keep reminding myself, we, we come here with, we cut, we leave here with what we came here with, which is nothing. So, you know, it's just, we let it go and we let it flow. Let it go and let it flow. I love that. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Um, please like and comment and share with anyone you think would be interested in this topic. And I'd love you all to comment below any questions. And then if there's anything that you found that works for you, we're always learning. We're always curious about what works for people when it comes to the financial realm. Um, and then if you have any ideas or um, needs for future videos, also comment let me know so that I know um, who to tackle next or what topics to I don't want to tackle anyone it's just topics I want to tackle next all right well everybody thank you for tuning in and Nancy you stay on I'm going to stop the recording we'll chat at the end and we'll say goodbye now bye everybody hi thanks for having me thanks for tuning in okay let me see if I can see oh here it is <laughs>